Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to record audio in FL Studio. This could be your voice, it could be a vocal, it could be a guitar, really anything, it all works the same way. There's two main ways to do this. One is recording straight into the playlist, which is going to work nine times out of ten. And there is another method which uses a plugin called the Edison, which allows you for a great amount of control over your audio recordings. I cover that method in another video, which I will link in the description. For now, we're going to be looking at the playlist recording, which is what's going to work for most people. I'm inside FL Studio 20 and I've just opened up a template here but it's pretty much blank. The first thing you're going to want to do is go into the options menu at the top here and select audio settings from the drop down menu. This is going to pull open the settings for our audio devices and on the input and output section the first thing we're going to want to select is our device. So if you don't know how to set up your audio interface or microphone I have another video showing how to set that up for recording but from this list you want to select your ASIO device. So if you don't have one, select ASIO for all, but if you do have an audio interface, like an Audient or a Mackie audio interface, just select it from this drop down menu. The next thing you're going to want to look at is the buffer length. So if you select this, uh, sort of some kind of control panel will come up for your interface. You want to make the ASIO buffer size as small as you can. The benefit of making it smaller is that the latency is going to be reduced. So the difference between you speaking and you hearing yourself in your headphones is gonna be as small as possible. The only downside to going smaller is that if you go too small, you might get crackling or some kind of distortion. So you want to have a middle ground, somewhere between 128 and 256 should be great. I'm keeping it larger for this tutorial. That's just so that my computer doesn't have some kind of meltdown. So now we can close the audio settings. And the next thing we're going to do is look at the mixer. So if you don't have the mixer in focus, you can press F9 to pull it up or press this button here and we're going to be finding an empty insert. So in this case insert 2 is empty. You need to make sure that this is empty and that no audio is being sent through here because otherwise that's going to get into your audio recording. Over on the left hand side of my mixer I have my sort of effects panel. Yours might be over on the right hand side or the left hand side depending on how you've set up your mixer. At the top here we're going to select our input device. So from the drop down list, you want to select the mono devices down here. So analog one or analog two, this is going to be whichever preamp in your audio interface you're using. Or if you have a USB microphone, it should pop up here as well. The stereo is just for if you're using two microphones at the same time. In my case, it's going to be analog one. So if I turn that on, immediately I can hear myself in my headphones. Uh, I can see on the mixer that visibly I'm getting signal. How much signal do you want to be getting through? It's a topic for debate, but I'd say a little bit quieter is better than loud. If you're too loud and you distort, you can't go back. If you're a bit quiet, you can always boost the gain up a little bit. Once there's some signal coming through, I'm just going to quickly rename this mixer track. So I'm going to left click and call it recording. And I'm going to give it a color just so that I stay nice and organized and I know what's going on. At this point, if we started recording, it would record the dry, raw signal from my voice into the microphone. If you want to put effects on, you can add them here, but they can't be taken off after you've recorded, so only put on effects that you're really comfortable with. For now, I'm just going to leave it with nothing. So the next step would be to arm the recording. So this is this little button here. It says arm disk recording. This is going to let FL Studio know that this is the track that I want to record. Now that we've set up the mixer exactly how we want to, I'm going to go onto the playlist and choose a place to record to. So on track one, I'm just going to rename it recording. Now that I've named the track, the next thing to do is to select the part of the recording I want to record around. So this could be any part in your song, but I'm going to just press control and left click and I'm going to select four bars just to record around. And then the next option is going to be selecting a countdown before recording from here so that I get a little bit of a countdown so I know when to start. I'm going to look at the loop recording option in a second, but for now I'm just going to record one wave file. So I'm going to hit the record and this options opens up. So we have audio into the Edison or audio editor, as I mentioned earlier, audio into the playlist as an audio clip, which is what we're going to use today, and a few more options. To find out more about those, you can just click this help at the bottom. So audio into the playlist as an audio clip, it will give me a countdown, and then I'm going to start recording. So as you can see, it's recording my voice, and I have a little preview of the WAV file there in the playlist. When it finishes, you can see that that preview has been consolidated into an actual track. The next thing I'd recommend doing is double clicking and sending it to the track that you want to. So in this case, I've sent it to a vocal track and you can also rename it super easy just by pressing F2 and then giving it a name. 
I'm going to delete this one by right clicking on it and we're going to look at the loop recording now. Now I'm going to select loop recording and this is going to keep recording round my selection until I'm happy with what I've recorded. And then just go back down to your uh, recording thing here. Make sure that you still have your input selected. Make sure that it's still armed to record and then go back up to the top and you can record more. Again, audio into the playlist as an audio clip. We'll get a countdown and then we'll start recording. So this is just going to be recording my voice into the playlist again as it was previously, but this time when we get to the end of the recording, it's just going to loop back around to the start and keep recording. And what's handy is that all the while it's still grouping these vocal takes, so it just adds underneath to the recording and keeps uh, grouping them together like that. When I'm done, I simply press stop. I can turn the recording off. And initially they're all muted, so they'll be kind of grayed out. If you press play, nothing will happen. But what you can do is you can unmute them by pressing T and left clicking to unmute them. Or you can manually unmute each track by just right clicking and saying unmute like that. At this point, we will have three of these recordings playing over the top of each other. And what you can do is something called consolidating your clip or like picking your best takes. So you can slice them up however you like. And if, for instance, you liked the start of the last take, you liked the middle of this take, and you liked the end of the final vocal take, you can consolidate all of these together into one clip, and it's super easy. So what you do is you just select them all together by pressing Control and dragging over them. And then you go to this bit here, the Playlist Options. You click down into Tools, Consolidate Playlist Selection, and there's shortcut keys for all of these, but you can just click From Selection Start, and it's consolidated those three takes into this take here. That's a fantastic new feature in FL Studio 20. It's brand new for this version. So the next option would be to record just a small section. So maybe I like the start, I like the end, but I didn't like the middle. So what you can do is you can press Alt and T to add a marker. You can drag it to that section and then right click on it and select Punch in Recording. And then I'm gonna add another marker just here and I'm going to drag it into the right place. I can select punch out recording. And then I don't need to press record this time. I just need to press play and it's gonna start recording just in that section. Watch it here. So now my voice is being recorded just into the middle section and it stopped the recording at the end. Again, it muted it, but you can unmute really simply by pressing T and then clicking on it, and we have a new section in the middle. That's pretty much the whole process of recording and consolidating in FL Studio. The only other thing I'd recommend is to make sure that you stay super organized, so make sure that you're sending your vocals to somewhere on the mixer, and that way you're gonna stay super organized and neat and tidy in your whole project. And this method works whether you're recording vocals, guitars, drums, just about anything in FL Studio is gonna work with this, and for more information about how to actually set your levels, how to record, recording tips and tricks, please do check out some of the other videos in this basic series and also just on the rest of the channel because we've got loads of videos covering sort of recording and production techniques. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.